Twas the night after SummerSlam, the go-home show for Payback and the Red Brand's first trip to the Thunderdome. Plus, it was the calling up party of one Keith Lee. Yes, Monday Night Wrestling saw a lot of basking, but not a lot of glory. Here's Raw Graded. Drew McIntyre out to start us off tonight and Drew is great on the mic. The passion there is amazing, but I struggle to get past this crowd noise they were piping in, just this low level of chatter. Here's the thing, when you talk to a live crowd, your inflection changes depending on the noise they're making. And also like there's natural pauses and breaks that you can make to let the crowd in. And it felt really synthetic, really synthetic. Cause obviously it was, but it really, I struggled with it. By the end of the night, you just kind of become a bit desensitized to it. But, oh man, it was a, probably a great promo by Drew, but I kind of got a bit lost in the, the annoyance of the crowd noise here. Drew says he beat Orton last night because he was more determined. He even offers Randy Orton another shot at the WWE Championship because Drew would just like to try and kick his head off again. Uh, Drew heads up the ramp, celebrating being WWE Champion in an arena, which he hasn't had proper chance to do yet. He's then attacked by Randy Orton, who batters him up the ramp and into gorilla position, ends up giving him two punt kicks before being ushered away by officials. Giving this opening segment a B, uh, Drew's passion here was brilliant as always. Orton's attack was intensive. I thought the punt kicks looked a bit crap because they didn't land. I think they barely grazed him. I'm not saying kick a guy full on in the heat. That's not the answer, but they just looked a bit ropey here and it took that and the crowd noise took quite a lot away from this opening promo for me. Nia Jax is backstage. She's been reinstated because apparently she apologized to Pat Buck. They made some rude jokes here. Shayna Baszler comes along, calls Nia Jax Haystacks Calhoun. Nia Jax calls Shayna a reject from the Adams family. And that's that. Great. Shayna Baszler is facing Bailey next. The golden role models very despondent as they make their way out to the ring. Nice little touch where Sasha Banks steps onto the ramp first, but then her music gets cut off far sooner than normal. And she looks very despondent by this. Here's Bailey as well with her head hung low. Not a great night for the role models at SummerSlam. Their friendship somewhat tested. Uh, but tonight, Bailey has to concentrate on Shayna Baszler. Baszler dominates until Banks distracts, and then Bailey is in charge. Then Nia Jax has made her way out to the ring as this one is underway as well. And Nia Jax is watching from the ramp. We see Shayna Baszler get thrown out of the ring as she gets back towards the ring, almost back in the ring. Here's Nia Jax to grab her foot and hoof her away. Disqualification, match is thrown out. These two start fighting. The golden role models take their leave and they're encouraging these two to beat each other up in which they stop beating each other up and start walking towards Sasha Banks and Bailey, And they look very concerned. The golden role models do, not the new super friends, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. Uh, C plus for this, this was, this, this wasn't a great match. It was, it was fine. Both are, of, are capable of much better, but a lot of moving parts. The finish was pretty awful. And the, the, the bit at the end where suddenly Nia Jax and Shayna stop fighting because the golden role models are encouraging it, it's just, ah, it just didn't land for me. Kevin Owens knocks on the door of Alistair Black to see if he's ready for the next segment. It is the Kevin Owens Show featuring special guest Alistair Black, who's got a whole eye patch thing going on. Uh, Alistair Black asks to see the footage of Buddy Murphy gouging his eye from a few weeks ago on Raw. And Owens is, is trying to side with Alistair Black. You know, they've got common enemies. And as he's talking about this, Alistair Black starts to, to feign the eye hurting. He's on the ground holding his head. Owen stands up to check on him, ends up eating a back fist and a black mass from Alistair Black, who then storms off up the ramp. Giving this a B plus for a segment, it was really very good. Top marks for long-term storytelling because Kevin Owens knocked on Alistair Black's door. I think that's why he beat him up, because he knocked on the door. I think that's what they were doing. But this was a good bit. Kev was great. Alistair Black here as, uh, as, as an eye-patched heel. 
I like. We get a fatal four-way now for the 24-7 championship, featuring all former 24-7 champions. I feel like whenever you win the 24-7 title, you're kind of sucked into its vortex. You don't so much enter the division, you just get caught in the gravitational pull. It's Akira Tozawa, Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander, and R-Truth. Uh, and nothing four-way. Uh, the one spot in this match that stands out is Shelton Benjamin powerbombing Akira Tozawa outside. He gets caught by the ninjas and put back onto the ring apron. Shortly after this, uh, you see Akira Tozawa do a sunset flip on R-Truth, get the three. He's a 24-7 champion. Runs off up the ramp whilst Benjamin beats up the ninjas. Cedric Alexander did next to nothing in this match and R-Truth did a rap, so that was good. It's a C-, minus. just a pointless endeavor for the 24-7 championship. I know you know we come here for the, the bright side of wrestling. I'm struggling so far. I'm, I'm struggling this week. Randy Orton heads out to have a chat following his attack on Drew McIntyre earlier. Orton says that he's upset that he didn't come through on his promise to become the WWE Champion. And he's actually offended that Drew McIntyre offered him a pity title shot, which is the lowest of all the title shots. This brings out new Raw star, Keith Lee. His music starts, then his music changes to something generic. Oh, they've changed his music. That's fine. Here's Keith Lee. He's there, there he is. He's, he's wearing very baggy shorts. Make, it looks a bit like he's wearing a skirt. I don't know what's going on here. Keith Lee comes out. He offers Orton the chance to bask in his glory and says, if he wants a fight, then he can have one right now. And Orton says, ah, maybe later, and rolls out of the ring. Given this segment of B minus, we've got a lot to discuss on the, the arrival of Keith Lee. I thought this was, a, this was good promo work by Orton, beautiful dulcet tones by Keith, but I'm concerned about the package when it comes to Keith Lee. That new music, no, now, the music he had in NXT, admittedly, right, hot take, wasn't the best, right? It was fine. I thought the lyrical structure of, of Limitless was a bit wonky, but it was his, it was better than this. It was better than somebody just going, oh, can we just, have you got anything really generic we can give to Keith? Yeah, but we need that bask in his glory bit. Ah, oh, just... Just install audacity and just cut it, it'll be fine. This was all oh, bad. That brought the grade crashing down and it hurt inside. It's a B minus. Angel Gaza is out with Demi from The Bachelor. She's uh, still sort of going between Gaza and Ivar. They did a segment backstage earlier on to talk about this. And tonight it's Angel Gaza in action against Montez Ford following the SummerSlam tag title match. This thing continues. Starts hot with Ford. Uh, some great offense by Montez. This guy can get air. Gaza uh, catches him coming off the top rope with a drop kick and that changes the pace of this match, putting Gaza in charge. Ivar makes his way out to the ring to see Demi from The Bachelor, offers her a turkey leg and his arm. And he walks off with Demi from The Bachelor because all oh, the women love Ivar. That's the thing, that's the joke. Gaza, distracted momentarily, uh, tries to get back into this match, ends up getting knocked off the top rope by Montez Ford, and Tez lands that beauty of a frog splash that basically touches the moon and lands again for the win. C plus for these guys. It was just a very basic showcase match. Uh, not much really happened in it. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't outstanding. Most of that C plus is Ford's frog splash, I'll be honest. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler are chatting backstage and Nia Jax says she wants to be the WWE Women's Tag Team Champion and she's looking to Baszler for help. And then Baszler says, I'll help you, but you have to promise that you'll leave me alone. Right, let's think on this. I will help you win the Women's Tag Team titles. I will become the Women's Tag Team Champion with you if you promise to leave me alone after. You become tag champs. You actually have to spend more time together. Is, mm, that's like going, all right, I'll buy a house with you, but you've got to promise to leave me alone. <laughs> this is a tough 
first episode of Raw for a born optimist. I'm just saying. <laughs> Six woman tag team action. It is the Iconics teaming with Zelina Vega to take on the Riot Squad and Bianca Belair. Good back and forth between uh, Ruby Riot and Billy Kay and Peyton Royce here. Liv gets a little bit in there as well, but the real fire is as soon as Bianca Belair is tagged in and she starts wiping out Zelina Vega. Vega is still denying poisoning Montez Ford, but Bianca ain't having it. Just battering her from pillar to post. This match descends into chaos, ends with Bianca picking up Vega for the KOD and the one, two, three. Giving it a C plus, it was fine. It was a fast paced match with a good result at the end. Mark Henry is here. He is officiating the arm wrestling contest between Apollo Crews and Bobby Lashley. Bob is getting a shot at Apollo's US Championship at Payback, so we get there with an arm wrestling contest. Some jaw jacking at first, some stalling from Bobby. We then see Bobby get in the face of Mark Henry as he's getting his arm ready. Apollo Crews takes advantage of this by stamping on Bobby Lashley's foot and just banging his arm down like that. Mark Henry goes, hey, Apollo won. Her business come out. Apollo Crews ducks out of the ring, avoids it. See you all on Sunday. C plus. <laughs> This is one of those nights, isn't it? It was fine. Like there was, it wasn't terrible. That they're very much they're they're rushing to get this match for Bobby. I think Bobby is leaving payback with the U.S. Championship. By the way, this was this was a very thrown together segment. Cruz gets one over on the Hurt Business. It was fine. After a recap of the SummerSlam street fight between Dominic and Seth Rollins, and after a Mysterio family powwow ahead of the tag team main event against Seth Rollins and Murphy, we go back to the ring for Lana and Natalia. <laughs> Yay! They give us a best of reel of Mickey James. We look to the Tron. It's a blank screen. Ha oh, that's the joke. There's no best stuff. Mickey James runs out to the ring here like they have like like they've threatened her family and pets. Charges to the ring, decks them both and leaves. <laughs> Giving it a C. It was there. It was fine. No harm done. It was short. Touched on an angle from last week. Giving it a C. Led to some uh, questionable tweets after WWE on Fox shared that blank Titan Tron image and encouraged people to turn it into memes. Yeah, that was regretful. If you see the tweet, check the replies. It's not, it's not the look I think they were hoping for. It's time for Raw Underground. Bobby is livid about losing that arm wrestling contest, so he just wants a fight with anyone. He's battering a no name here. Dolph Ziggler wants a piece. Hey, do you remember last week? when we were announced, we got the announcement that Dolph Ziggler was gonna face Ivar on Raw Underground tonight. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, that's not happening. Bobby's just beating up Dolph and throwing him into the crowd. <laughs> and then Bobby beats up someone else. More Raw Underground later. <laughs> Yay. Right, Randy Orton is facing Keith Lee now. It's been a, a weird episode of Raw, but my boy Keith Lee is in there with Randy Orton. There's time to turn this round. Keith Lee getting the rub of a life. What are you wearing, Keith? What are you wearing? Why is he wearing a shirt? Why is he wearing shorts that look like a skirt? What, why is, why is his music still crap? Why, mm. Orton is overpowered by Keith early on. Keith squeezes his hand and everything and throws him around like he's nothing. Orton uses the turnbuckle uh, to take advantage, throwing Keith into the buckle just like that. Keith fights back into this match, but ends up eating a drape in DDT. And it looks like Orton's gonna go for the RKO. And Drew McIntyre pulls Orton out of the ring, beats him up, chases him away. Hurt my hand on the desk. <laughs> chases him away. Drew's in the ring, Keith's gone. End of Keith's in-ring debut for Raw. <sighs> right now, the match itself was, it was fine, it was short, it was all right. Keith looked good, apart from the gear. I'm gonna give it a B minus, barely a B minus. A C plus, 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 if I could. Or a B minus, 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 minus. I'm gonna give it a B minus. Like Keith looks strong in there against Orton, and the way this leads later on in the night, it's there's chance to fix this. 
What was Keith wearing? Drew McIntyre is backstage and he is wishing blue murder on Randy Orton. And Orton attacks him from behind again. Oh, what fun. He gives him a third punt kick. Oh, what fun. Orton gets dragged away. Drew is convulsing on the floor. Oh, tell you what, it's a hey, hey, stock in punt kicks has gone up tonight. Am I right, kids? The Women's Championship is on the line. Sasha Banks and Asuka facing off in a lumberjack match. These two have put together some solid work on Raw over the last few weeks and months. And this is a really good match back and forth with these guys. The lumberjack stipulation kind of comes out of nowhere, uh, but we have all the bad guys and all the good guys segregated, which is handy because it means that when Sasha Banks gets thrown out into the good guy side, we can have like the bad guy, good guy standoff before we go to break. Sasha is in control after the break, throws Asuka out of the ring and Bailey gets a couple of shots in on Asuka in the process. Asuka fires back and then goes hunting for Bailey, and she's fighting her way through all the bad guy lumberjacks. Bad girl lumberjacks? Bad lumberjacks. Yeah, bad lumberjacks. She's fighting through all the baddie lumberjacks. Uh, in, in like basically a sped up version of Kill Bill until she gets to Bailey, but then Sasha jumps her and they get back into the ring. Sasha is is back on top of this match. Bailey goes to grab a steel chair to hand to Sasha Banks, but then Shayna Baszler comes along and pulls Bailey away from the ring, so Sasha doesn't get the chair. And in all of this chaos. She gets trapped in the Asuka lock and taps out once again. Uh, Sasha denied winning back the Raw Women's Championship in this one. This was a B. It was a short and explosive match between two grafters. Best match of the night. Not saying a whole lot, but definitely the best match of the night so far. After we watch an ambulance driving away with Drew in the back, we hear from Keith Lee, who says Drew is going to be OK, but he can't say the same for Randy Orton. And it's going to be Keith Lee versus Randy Orton at Payback. This hasn't been the most auspicious of debuts for Keith. OK, I had quite a few tweets of people asking me what I thought of tonight. Wasn't the best. There was a few things I didn't like. But we, we must fight the urge to judge a book by its first chapter. We must fight the urge. They're having a match on Sunday. The fact that Keith Lee has debuted on Raw and he's in there with Randy Orton, literally a week after Orton was in a title match at SummerSlam, this is the stuff we need to hold on to, okay? The fact that Keith Lee is in the mix in the main event, this is the stuff we need to hold on to, right? They have an opportunity on Sunday to sit back and just drink in all of the reaction for Keith and take some vital steps from there. They can fix this on Sunday. Let's see what they do. We go back to Raw Underground. Cedric Alexander, who was approached once again earlier in the night by MVP, is being choked out by Bobby Lashley. Thanks for coming to Raw this week, Cedric. Uh, he then gets jumped by Eric from the Viking Raiders, does Bobby, and Bobby dispatches him. That'll do. And that's your Raw Underground for this week. I'm giving it a C. Last week, we had a little bit of focus for Raw Underground, didn't we? We had a, a few little things that were bubbling over that we could move into for next week. We even had a match announced for this week, which didn't happen and wasn't mentioned. <laughs> Turns out loads of segments from Raw Underground were chucked away lastminute.com uh, for this episode of Raw. But regardless, just... That we're back to where we started with Raw Underground. Like the, the first, the last thing we see of Raw Underground tonight is what we saw at the end of the first Raw Underground, which is Shane going, hey, hey, I can't wait to see what happens next week with the Hurt Business standing there looking all mean. That's basically what we did in the first week. We're back there. It's main event o'clock. It is Dominic and Rey Mysterio teaming up against Seth Rollins and Murphy. This match starts on the rampway. Rey gets taken out early and Dominic is in there on his own, but he holds his own in this one. Dominic's in the ring for the majority of this match, actually, even when Rey gets back into the fight. The majority of this match is Dominic Mysterio. And you know what? He looks really good in there as well. Seth is reluctant to get in there against Dom until uh, Dom is being beaten up by Murphy. And then Seth wants a piece. Uh, we then get Ray in the match and Ray and Seth end up having a little bit of a back and forth. But then Seth gets out of there. Then Murphy gets back in. Murphy eats a double 619. Dominic goes up top. The lights flicker. 
And then here's Retribution sliding into the ring. Uh, Seth and Murphy make their exit and Retribution just beat down Ray and Dominic Mysterio. Just, just a relatively uninspired battering of the Mysterio family here. Beat them up on the outside of the ring and then stand on the ring apron going, yeah, we did it. Well, this is our house now. This is our house now. And that's how Raw goes off the air. B plus for the main event. Actually a really exciting but short tag match with these guys. Dom looked really solid in there. Uh, finish was, yeah, Retribution back again. I feel like when you've got this, this entire electronic arena, you could have had more fun with the Retribution stuff, you know? Could you not have had Retribution members with the with the, the balaclavas on appearing on random screens during the night? Could you not have had the screens flickering around a bit? Rather than just kind of having the lights go off and on and off and on and off and on and there they are. I feel like you missed the trick of having some real fun with this. But regardless, it was a good match for the main event. Exciting stuff. Giving it a B plus. Overall this week, now I use an average grade calculator to work out what grade Raw should get this week. And this week, the average grade calculator gave me a B minus, but I don't think Raw this week deserves a B minus. I really don't. There was, it was, it really was a troubled episode of Raw in my opinion. I'm actually gonna give it a C plus. I'm gonna move it down a whole grade. And it's not because I'm like this massive Keith Lee fanboy and because they burned Keith, I am burning this episode of Raw. Nah, 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 I'm not. Not that kind of, not that kind of guy. Like if Keith had had a great night and everything else was crap, I still would have called this out as being crap. But there was, there was a lot off with this night and I just didn't, I, I did not enjoy Raw this week. More often than not, I'm an optimist and I love watching Raw. Even those days where you will have my, my peers and colleagues shouting about how bad Raw was, I'm able to still see the good in stuff like that. And I take great pride in bringing you optimism. I struggled this week, I really did, but there is chance to fix it, all right? The Keith Lee thing, okay, wasn't the best start. Let's see what happens on Sunday. The retribution stuff, a bit weak. It's all right, we can fix it. The Sasha and Bailey stuff continues to tell a great story, and I'm really happy with that. Uh, Orton and Drew were fine tonight. They weren't mind-blowing. Uh, the 24-7 title stuff is getting a bit old, long in the tooth now. Raw Underground's lost its way again. Uh, there's lots that needs to be looked at. I kind of thought that post-SummerSlam we'd have a bit of a hot reset. But other than introducing Keith Lee, everything else feels very much the same. But let's see what happens. I'm a born optimist. People ask me, is the glass half full or half empty? I say, I hope so. I hope so. I hope your glass is half full. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.